Praise the Lord. You, you may be seated. You know what? I'm sorry. Remain standing. Let's get the script. Let's, let's read the, the scripture. Stop laughing at me, Sister Grace. <laughs> I can see you. <laughs> let's go to John chapter 15, verse 13. John 15, 13. Welcome to Bible study. Welcome once again to Bible study. So glad to have each and every one of you here this evening. John 15, 13, the Bible says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. That a man lay down his life for his friends. Going to Isaiah 53 and 2. The Bible reads, <clears throat> Isaiah 53 and 2, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. It's a prophecy speaking about Jesus, saying that he is not going to be very handsome <laughs> or very good to, to look at. I want to teach this evening for the 30 minutes that I have here on a subject entitled, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. And I hope to bring this point home to you this evening as clearly as possible. Your pastor wants to be like Jesus. Your pastor wants you to want to be like Jesus. On your, on your way down, just tell somebody once again, you look very good tonight. And do this. You're already doing it. Smile as big as you can. Just, just show those pearly whites. <laughs> hey, man, I like that. I hear all kinds of compliments getting thrown back and forth across the aisle. You know, it's... It's interesting when somebody says something nice about you, you can't help but smile. When somebody says something negative or mean about you, you can't help but frown. That's hard. I can't even do it right now. <laughs> no one said anything mean about me lately. But you can't help but, but frown. So let me ask you something. What is better, to smile and to give people compliments, and to, and to tell people uh, positive things? Or is it better to always say something, always point out, yeah, it's good except for <laughs> you missed that. Thank you for cleaning the whole church. You polished everything. You vacuumed everything. You cleaned all the bathrooms, cleaned all the toilets, but I found a piece of paper. I just wanted to tell you that. Amen. I'm just I'm just talking. <laughs> I'm just talking. I'm I'm trying to trying to set the stage for how people can be so different and how people can have such different uh views and opinions about how to interact with with one another. But ultimately, I want to be like Jesus. There's a it was an old slogan many years ago and maybe some of us know it, some of us don't. But it was a commercial, and it started off like this. I want to be like Mike. Who can remember that? It was 20 years ago, and the Mike I'm talking about is Michael Jordan. It was a commercial. I want to be like Mike. I want to be like Mike. And everybody was dribbling basketballs, and, and everybody was shooting basketballs, and, and everybody was playing basketball. But let me tell you something. Not one of them was able to be like Mike. <laughs> They'll debate today. There is nobody. There was. There, there is nobody like Michael Jordan. There is no. No matter how much you want to be like Michael Jordan, brother Andy, you don't have a basketball career in your future. Amen. Let me pick on somebody younger, son. You don't have a basketball career in in your future. No matter how much you 
No matter how many hours you spend dribbling, no matter how many hours you're going to spend shooting from the free throw line, no matter how many hours you're going to spend moving with the basketball all around the court, studying the game, you'll never be like Michael Jordan. But let me tell you who you can be like. If you decide that you want to be like Jesus, you can be like Jesus. Amen. If you decide you want to be like, like Jesus, um, he can help you be just like him. I was going to go through all the career stats of, of Michael Jordan, but, but you don't really need, need to hear all his stats because they probably don't mean nothing to this generation. You guys didn't grow up watching Michael Jordan. Most of us, most of us didn't. I remember uh, I, was, I showed Brother, brother Gnarly. He, he says he likes football a little bit, soccer more. But, but he watches American, American football. And I said, have you ever heard of Barry Sanders? <laughs> I said, you don't know who Barry Sanders is. He's like the greatest running back of all time. And I can mention Barry Sanders, and I, and I can mention uh, famous soccer players, and I, and I can mention musicians, and, and, and I, can, I can mention all these people that there's only one like them. And there's... Elvis Presley for some of you, uh, <laughs> um, uh, what's his name, Michael Jackson for, for some of you, uh, country, country singers for, for some of you, uh, and to you there'll only be that one famous person, and there'll never be anybody else like them. Jordan, he was, he was a great basketball player, and I'll never be as good as him, but I can be I can do some of the things that Jesus did. I'll never be able to do what, I can't fly like Jordan. Michael Jordan, when he would jump up to dunk the basketball, he would just fly. They, they called him Air Jordan. He looked like he was just floating in the air. Barry Sanders, when he had the football in his hand, and, and you saw some of them. You, don't, you didn't see the, the best ones. You saw just some of them, Brother Gnarly. But when he had the, he had the football, he would spin. You know, like some of you do in church, he would, he, would, he would spin, and that big old linebacker would just fall down to the ground because he couldn't touch him. He couldn't get a hold of Barry Sanders. He was, he was so good. Barry Sanders would kick his feet. When you went to tackle him, he would just kick his feet. You know how I know? Because I, I was trying to tackle somebody who was pretending to be Barry Sanders. They kicked me right, right in the chin. <laughs> I got stitches across here. <laughs> he would do that, but I'll never be as good as Barry Sanders. I can't do the things that Michael Jordan did. I can't do the things that Barry Sanders did. I can't sing like some famous singers. I'll never be able to play soccer like some like the average 10-year-old can play soccer because it's a lot of running, and I, I'm, I don't have the heart for it. <laughs> I'm too old. I can't, I can't. It's too late now for me. I'll never be able to, I'll never be able to do that. But let me tell you, I can be like Jesus. I can be like Jesus because the Bible says that he healed the sick. Amen. The Bible says that he, he put broken uh, pieces of the heart back together again. The Bible says that he, he can restore marriages. He can bring peace to the storms of your life. He can give sight to the blind. He can raise the dead. And he said, greater things, than these, greater things than these will you do. Jordan, you are, you are great, but my God is greater. Amen. I'm telling you, it's great to watch football. It's great to watch uh, football. It's great to watch basketball. It's great to watch some of these sports and to see some of these athletes do the things that they do. It's great to watch the Super Bowl. It's fun. But if the Super Bowl was there in church, let me tell you what. We're not canceling church for the Super Bowl. Because let me tell you what's better to watch. I like to see someone's life changed. Hallelujah. I like to see someone give their life to Jesus at the altar. I like to see somebody be healed. I like to see a marriage put back together again. Amen. I, I, like, I like to see a miracle happen. Uh, I like to see some deliverance take place. Hallelujah. Come on, let's stand up just one more. Let's clap. Uh, 
Amen. Thank you, brother. Let's clap for this, uh, that somebody can be delivered at this altar, that somebody can be delivered. I'm talking about drugs. Uh, I'm talking about alcohol. Uh, I'm talking about cursing. Uh, I'm talking about someone who just can't get their lives right. Uh, they need to be delivered, and it can happen at this altar. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Uh, hallelujah. I was struggling to get through this, uh, but I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Uh, we need to come to church uh, with an expectation uh, that God is going to do a work. Praise God. Stop putting so much faith and trust uh, in the things of this world. Hey, Amen. You may be seated. I'm talking about being like Jesus. Hallelujah. I know I promised I'd let you testify. Let me see. Come on up. I want, let me, let's, let me say this. How many work at a job where everybody's not Christian? <laughs> How about this? How many work at a job where everybody doesn't act like they're Christians? <laughs> they may say they are. <laughs> a lot of people say they are. You ever worked in a factory? Brother Starr, you know what I'm talking about. Factory life for a Christian is, is tough. It's tough. You've got to be like Jesus. You've got to do everything you can to, to, to be like Jesus. And I want my son to, to testify a little bit about uh, factory work. Praise the Lord, church. So recently I have gotten an opportunity for a new job that pays me better and that gives me a better opportunity to move up and to, you know, to live. And, you know, that's a great, you know, that's a testimony within itself, but that's not what I want to talk about. You see, ever since I graduated high school, I could remember I worked in a factory. And being in a factory always stood out because I followed the Christian standards. I would, you know, I didn't swear. I didn't talk about profound things. I didn't, I didn't do the things that the world saw as normal. They looked at me and they... You know, they think that I was weird. I was the oddball out. I was um, not, you know, not normal. I was unnormal. And at the recent place that I worked at, I worked in a factory that made chemicals. We worked with acid and caustic and, you know, very nasty things. That um, When I got there, it was, it was a wreck. It was falling apart. You know it's bad when the machines are held together by duct tape and super glue. <laughs> And the workers, the machines reflected the workers as the workers were broke. They were just, you know, at a point to where they did not care what they said. They were very angry. They were very, um, they were just very uh, just miserable. And, you know, misery enjoys company. And when you're around that, you start to become miserable yourself. But working at this factory, I made up in my mind that I was not going to be like them. In fact, I was going to push myself to show them that I have something that they want, that I have a love of God inside of me that I can give to you, and I can show you what my God can do. And throughout the year of being here at this factory, I made such a difference within these people. Let me tell you, some of the people, their jobs and their lives, coming to work became their new favorite thing because of me, because of my positive attitude and the God within me and me not breaking down. There were days where I felt like, you know, I, you know this day was so stressful. I'm, I really want to get angry. I really just, you know, I don't want to be here anymore. I want to quit. I want to walk out. I just, I can't take it anymore. But, you know, the thought of giving up is that's not something God would do. That's not something God, you know, would want me to do. So I'm going to continue to stay here. I'm going to continue to make a difference within this place. And today was my last day there. And everybody came up to me and they said, Gary, your, your love, your, you know, your positive attitude, everything you did, your Christian lifestyle, they're like, this was the greatest thing that I've ever seen, the greatest thing that ever came through these doors. You're such an inspiration. You know, we hope to see you in the future. We want to see you grow, but, you know, don't forget us. Always remember us. Keep praying for us. We know you are praying for us. We know you're there for us. Like, we know we can go to you when we need you. And we know that you love us, and we know that you got the love of God through you, and we just want to continue to feel that. Don't let that leave us. Just continue to do that for us. And it was a very sad day for me because hearing that meant a lot, that I was able to change somebody's life through, you know, the love of God flowing through me and coming out to them. That's why we, when my dad um, gave us the vision to work on the inside and let it grow out, it was, I was working on the inside of me. 
I allowed God to work on the inside of me. I allowed God's love to come within me. I allowed the Holy Ghost to work through me, and it poured out to other people that I was surrounded by. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise right now. Yes, Hallelujah. What a powerful testimony of being like Jesus. You can go to work, and you can just fit in. You can go to your place of business, and you can just blend in. And you can just try to not stand out. Or you can take a chance. You can take a chance to make a difference in that place. Hey, Amen. Thank you, son, for taking a chance at separating your. You, didn't, you had to go to that job, but you didn't have to be like them. You didn't have to act like them. You didn't have to take on their attitude and their negativity. Praise the Lord. What a testimony. Jordan, you are great, but my God is greater. Michael Jordan, you're great, but my God is greater. Michael Jordan, you did amazing things with a basketball that I'll never be able to do. But my God promised in his word that greater things than this will you do. Saint of God, friend, I want to be like Jesus. I want At my old job, we used to argue for hours and hours every day. Who was the greatest? Who is the greatest of all time? Who's the greatest golfer? Who's the greatest basketball player? We never argued about the greatest soccer player. We didn't know any, any of them. But we would argue about the greatest football player and quarterback. Who is the greatest of all time? I don't know the answer to that. I know this, though. There's none like my God. There's none like my God. Hallelujah. He stands alone in the universe, uh, the ultimate champion of my soul. Uh, and I want to be like Jesus. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. I know it's not fair to compare Jordan to Jesus. But there was a time when Jordan was worshipped by many people. He was worshipped by a lot of people. I could go into detail about what Jordan is like as a human being. But you already know, just look in the mirror. We have the same nature. We have the same weakness. We have the same shortcomings. I'd rather tell you a little bit about Jesus Christ. Jesus, his only, his only credentials were himself. He never wrote a book. He never commanded an army. He never held a political office. He never owned property. He mostly traveled within 100 miles of his village, but he attracted crowds who were amazed at his words and at his stunning deeds. Even those from other religions acknowledge that Jesus was a great moral teacher. Jesus in the Indian leader, Mahatma Gandhi, he spoke highly of Jesus, righteous, his righteous life and his profound words. I'm skipping stuff. <laughs> I'm running out of time. What was Jesus like as a person? He had a compassionate nature. He fed crowds. He healed and he teached them. He had a compassionate nature, saints of God. He was serious and he was focused. He had a mission in life and he never got sidetracked from it. Knowing the weightiness of it and the shortness of time, his attitude was that of a servant. He didn't come to be served, but to serve. His attitude was that of a servant. You have to get this in your mind and you have to get this in your heart. Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. We haven't done foot washing and communion here yet, but we will. Why? Because it teaches us to love God and to love one another. There's nothing more humbling than washing another man's feet. Hey, man, I have a story about that. I, I'm going to tell it at another time. But, but Jesus washed the feet. This is the Lord of glory. He washed the feet of his disciples. Can you, can you imagine God robed in flesh, took off his outer garment, got down, and began to wash their feet? And the disciples looking, what is he doing? Why is, and I know some of you, 
you know, you, you don't want to see me take out trash and, and you, you don't want to see me help and, and, and do things around the church. But let me tell you, I'm a servant. I know I'm your pastor, but at, at heart, at heart, I'm, I'm just a servant. This is my church, too. I don't mind vacuuming. I don't mind cleaning bathrooms. Uh, I don't mind preaching. I don't mind, I don't mind teaching you a Bible study, baptizing you, pray, praying for you. Uh, amen. There's nothing about the work of God that I'm above. Hallelujah. There's nothing about the work of God that my family is, is, is above. Uh, and we, we have the heart of a servant. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, because I want to be like Jesus. Jesus had a heart of mercy and forgiveness. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. This is one of the least talked about but most amazing characteristics of Jesus. While he was being crucified, after the crown of thorns, after the lashes from the whip, after he had been spit upon, after his body had been broken, he looked and he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Let me say this. Sometimes when you're at work, little Gary, and, and they're teasing you and they're making fun of you because you are you don't do the things of the world, because you don't have promiscuous sex, uh, because you're, uh, amen, it's the truth, uh, hallelujah, because because you're not going out partying and, and doing drugs and, and drinking alcohol, uh, amen. And they'll look at you and they'll tease you and they'll make fun of you and they'll get together in a group. I know I've been there. And they'll start to whisper and talk about you because you're trying to be holy. You're trying to be separate. Uh, you're trying to be like Jesus, uh, amen. Let me tell you what you got to do. Uh, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. They have no idea what it is that is inside of me, that is keeping me, that is helping me, that has saved me, that is. Hallelujah. Hey, man, you may be seated. Can, can you say the same? Praise God. I'm not saying it happens automatically. My son has beat me. When I was his age working and being made fun of, I could only take so much. <laughs> Amen. But I taught, I told him, this is my experience. This is what happens. This is, and I was able to teach him so he could do better than me. Praise God. It took me a little longer. He learned faster than I did. Amen. I thank God for that. He had a reputation, Jesus did, for being good and caring, honest and truthful. He never violated his own word. Jesus was intimate with his followers. He spent quality and quantity time with them. He, he coveted their fellowship. He taught them and he helped them to focus on what was eternal. Jesus is patient. He's very patient. He's very patient. Why did I say that three times? Because I want you to be patient with one another. I want you to be like Jesus. I want you to be patient with one another, knowing and understanding our frailties and our faults. He was and he is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but all should come unto repentance. Friend, I want to be like Jesus. The book of John, chapter 4, Jesus said, I, and I must need go through Samaria. He said, I have to go to, through, I'm sorry, Samaria to meet a woman at the well. As I was praying today, I was, I was thinking about that. And I was thinking, we kind of skip right over the fact that that woman was going there at a time when nobody else was supposed to be at the well. <laughs> She was going at a time when she knew that none of the other ladies were going to be there. Because we know this woman had a history. She had a past. Jesus told her, and revealed that unto her. So she had some shame in her life. And she was trying to avoid contact with other human beings. So that way they would not shame her. And I thought to myself, how painful Every day must have been for her. How painful to have to go to the well at the hottest point of the day 
when the heat was blazing down, when the thirst was getting incredible. She had to go there so that way nobody could see her and nobody would, would stop her and nobody would give her the look of disgust. And then I thought, well, how good Jesus was to meet her there. Amen. She didn't know it that day. She had no idea that day what was about to happen. But Jesus said, I must need go through Samaria because there's a hurting human being. There's a human being who has messed up, who has made some bad decisions in their life. And I have to go meet her there. I wonder how many people we see every day hurting human beings. How many people is Jesus putting on your heart? Say, go this way. And you're like, why, Lord? It's faster if I go this way. I'm telling you, I've got somebody. I've got somebody. They don't even know you're coming. But they need your visit. They need what you have. You've got Jesus, and they need Jesus. In verse 31, it says, in the meanwhile, his disciples prayed to him, prayed him saying, Master, eat. Master, eat. They said, come on, eat something. The disciples, you see, went to go get lunch, and they came back after, after Jesus had ministered to this woman at the well. And they brought the food with them. And they asked Jesus to eat. And Jesus said in verse 32, but, but he said unto them, I have meat or I have food to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, have any man brought him aught to eat? The disciples weren't that quick. It's just like us. <laughs> Sometimes we just don't know what's, what's going on in the spirit. But thank God Jesus takes his time with us and explains it to us. Jesus said unto them, my meat or my food is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. I want to be like Jesus, friend. I don't want to get so caught up in feeding my appetite. I know you have to eat or we'll die. I, I understand that. But I don't want to get so caught up in building my own kingdom. I don't want to get so caught up in my high education or, or my job or, or, or buying bigger houses or, or doing just things that are temporary, things that won't last in this world, that I don't want to get so caught up in that work that I miss the work of the Lord. Amen. You say, but pastor, I'm not called to be a pastor. I'm not called to be a preacher or a teacher. You think that's the work? You honestly believe that that is all the, that? I can't go to your job and bring your coworker here. Hey Amen. I can't get into, to, I can't go to every one of your family reunions <laughs> and, and grab all your family members and tell them they need to come to church. I can't teach every home friendship group lesson. <laughs> It's impossible. I can't be everywhere all the time. This can't be the only ministry. You all are ministers. Every one of you are ministers. Every one of you have a ministry. Amen. Isaiah 53, 2, getting back to our scripture. Amen. What God is looking for, let me say this. My pastor used to, used to say this all the time. He's not looking for your money. He's not looking for your talent. He's not looking for your abilities. But what God is really looking for is simply this, your availability. He's looking for you to make yourself available. Just make yourself available. Isaiah 53, 2, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. It's not me. It's the God in me that I want, you, I want them to see. I wish everyone would pray every day for 
just a little bit of the passion that Jesus had for you. I wish you would pray every day that you have the same passion for other people that Jesus had for you. Praise the Lord. Would you stand with me? Passion is a strong, a strong and barely controllable emotion. When you have a passion for someone or something, you can't sit down. You ever seen people cheering on their favorite sports team? You ever seen people cheering on their their child when they're playing a game or they're doing something? They, you know, they don't know what to do. They want to run. They want to. When my mom would watch me wrestle, I I I was a luchador. She would <laughs> she would she would watch me wrestle, and she said it's she would be just as I'm making it. She's just trying to, because she would come on, move. Uh. She had a passion about her son and about my success. If we get a passion for souls, a passion for backsliders, a a passion for sinners, let me tell you something. You won't be able to sit still. When you see them praying at the altar, you're going to be like this. Come on. (laughs) Come on, get the Holy Ghost. (laughs) Come on. Hallelujah. Stand up. Uh, Receive what God has for you. Get your healing. You're just going to be like, oh, come on. Amen. When you get a passion like Jesus had for you, when you get that same passion for other people and for everyone else, then you're being like Jesus. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. I want the compassion, not just the passion. I don't know if he's, I want the compassion of Jesus. Compassion now is sympathetic feelings for the suffering and hurting of others. Sympathetic feelings for the suffering and hurting of others. Now, listen, I know there's a lot of people asking for money. At the, on, we're in the area. I understand. You can't help everybody. You can't. I, underst- I understand that. But I'm, what I want you to do and your family members. I know you people have a, we have a lot of family members that are always calling need, needing something. Trust me, I I know. But what I but what I want you to do is pray about it. Search the spirit. Ask God, is this the one that I need to buy the lunch for or, or buy the, buy the dinner for? And it it's not that you're going to win that person. I'm sorry. It's not necessarily that you're going to win that person, but you're just going to be the Jesus that's in you. You're just, you're just trying to be like Jesus. He fed thousands. He fed thousands. When he was at that cross on Calvary, there was just a few people. Just, just one or two people there. Think about that. He fed thousands. And there were just a couple people at, at the cross. Calvary. I want to have the same feelings that Jesus had. Those same feelings that caused him to break to break with society and to go to Samaria, a place that Jews did not go, and to meet a sinner woman, the type of people that Jews did not talk to. I know I can never be him. I just want to be like him. I just want to be like Jesus. People throughout history and all over the world have done great things for God. I think the secret is simply this. Allow Jesus to work through you. Allow Jesus to work through you. In order to do that, you have to begin to take on some of his characteristics. I was talking to my wife about the characteristics of Jesus and and I'm closing with this. And Jesus got angry, but he didn't sin. Jesus got, got angry, but, but the Bible says that he, he sinned not. She, she said, yeah, he took it out on the tables. He flipped, he flipped the tables and instead of flipping the people over. 
what I want to say is this. You have to make up in your mind. I'm not mad at you for what you said to me. I'm mad at the devil for tricking you into saying that to me. <laughs> Does that make sense? You have to pick, you have to pick your enemy. I don't want it to be my brothers and sisters. I used to teach my young people this all the time. You need to recognize the devil. You need to recognize the enemy of your soul. You need, you need to recognize when, when uh, he's working through somebody else. Does that, does, that make, does that make sense? Sometimes sometimes the devil works through other people and gives them ideas and thoughts and, and tells them how to hurt you. Jesus said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I want to be like Jesus. Amen. I just want to be like Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm going to quit right now because we have music practice. Thank you. I want to th- – <laughs> that's good. I'm s- is, our, is our corral practicing tonight? Where are they at? I'm looking at them. I see them. Amen. Didn't our Corral do such an awesome job? Everybody has been bragging and talking and talking talking about them and and bragging them up. I'm I can't wait to uh, to see them again. I'm hoping it's going to be this this Sunday. You know what? I don't care if you sing, sing that same song again. That song has been on my heart in Spanish all week long. I cannot get it. I wake up in the morning. Mi it's just it's in it's in my heart. I can't believe it's in, it's in my in my soul, and I was so so happy to uh, hear you guys sing that. And I think you could do it again. That would be that would be perfect. That would be awesome. Amen. Can I? Yes, I can't. I can't wait. That would be that would be so great. Um, one last thing, we have our speaker for the Spanish service uh, Friday the twenty eighth. Uh, my father-in-law will be here. He'll he'll be he'll be preaching for us, brother Terrell. So I'm looking forward looking forward to that. And I want you to do this as homework before we dismiss in Jesus' name. I want you to practice smiling. I want everybody to practice smiling and and just if you <laughs> if you <laughs> you guys are making me laugh. Practice. Practice smiling as best. You're doing a good job. Everybody, everybody's doing a wonderful job. Practice smiling as best you can. You're just missing the wonderful name of Jesus. Shake hands and be friends.